So now we have arrived at one of the most important insights in linear algebra. And it's the insight that when you have a matrix A that maps vectors from Rn to vectors of Rm, then there are four fundamental spaces that are very important. And what are these fundamental subspaces? Well, we're given a matrix A that is m by n. First subspace is the column space. The second one is the null space. You've seen both of those, and you've seen why those are important. Then there is the row space, which you haven't seen yet why that's so important. And finally, there is what's known as the net left null space. Now, the row space of A was the same as the column space of A transpose, and similarly, the left null space of A is the null space of A transpose. So notice that these come in pairs. But also notice that the column space is in Rm, so is the left null space. The null space is in Rn, and so is the row space. Why is this called the left null space? Well, if you take your matrix A, then if you take a vector and look at it as a row vector and multiply it times the matrix A, then the set of all such vectors that map to the zero vector but as a row vector, all of those vectors are in the left null space. So it's like multiplying from the left with vectors. It's important to also think about what the dimensions of these different subspaces are. So remember that we have a matrix A, and then we had a bunch of pivots that showed up when we reduced matrix A to row echelon form. And let's say we had K pivots. Then the dimension of this space was K. The dimension of the null space was N minus K. The dimension of the row space is K, and the dimension of the left null space is m minus k. Here's a theorem, an important one. The row space of A is orthogonal to the null space of A. Now remember that both of these are subsets of Rn, and remember that this here is of dimension k, and this here is of dimension n minus k, which means there were k linearly independent vectors that form a basis for R of A, the row space of A, and n minus k vectors that form a basis for the null space of A. So what we would like to do is show that if we take an arbitrary vector y in the row space of A and an arbitrary vector z in the null space of A, we need to show that then the dot product of these two vectors is always equal to zero. How does that work? Well, we look at the dot product of y with z, and we realize that since y is in the row space of A, it is in the column space of A transpose. And if it's in the column space of A transpose, then it can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A transpose. And therefore, there must be some vector x such that A transpose x is equal to y. So we write that down. Then we apply what we learned about transposing the product of a matrix and a vector, and we find this. And then we can put parentheses around AZ and recognize that if Z is in the null space of A, then that must be equal to the zero vector. But if you take the dot product of a vector with the zero vector, then you get zero. Therefore, if you take arbitrary vectors Y and Z in the row space and null space of A, respectively, those two vectors are always perpendicular, and therefore these two subspaces are perpendicular. Here's another really important theorem. What does it say? Well, we know that the row space of A is a subspace of Rn, and we know that the null space of A is a subspace of Rn, and we know that the dimension of R of A is equal to K, the number of pivots, and the dimension of the null space of A is N minus K. And we also know that these two spaces are now orthogonal to each other. It sure would be nice if any arbitrary vector X in Rn could be written as 
a vector in the row space of A added to some other vector that is in the null space of A. Okay, that's sort of like if you look at the unit basis vectors, if you have some vector that points somewhere here, then you can write that vector as the sum of a vector in the space spanned by the first unit basis vector and a vector in the space spanned by the second unit basis vector. So what's the proof of this? Well, there's a little technical part of this proof that we're going to skim over, but it goes like this. We know that the dimension of the row space is equal to k, and we know that the dimension of the null space is equal to n minus k. What does that mean? A basis for the row space of A must contain exactly k vectors. Let's name these vectors v0 through vk minus 1. A basis for the null space must have n minus k vectors, and we're going to conveniently name these vectors vk through vn minus 1. So that if we put all of these vectors together, we end up with n vectors. Now you can prove that these vectors are linearly independent. And notice that if you have n linearly independent vectors in Rn, then those vectors form a basis for Rn. And what does that mean? It means that any arbitrary vector x in Rn can be written as a linear combination of those basis vectors. But now we can take that summation and split it into the summation over the first k vectors and a summation over the last n minus k vectors. And notice that this is a linear combination of basis vectors for the row space of A. So therefore, this must lie in the row space of A. And similarly, this must lie in the null space of A. And thus, we have found our vector in the row space and our vector in the null space, such that if you add them together, you get the vector x. This insight can be used to relate all of these fundamental subspaces to each other by looking at how A maps an arbitrary vector from Rn to Rm, and I'm going to illustrate that next.